Hello again everyone, welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an Android app in just a few minutes using AI, even if you don't know how to code. So, to create an Android app, you will need to download and install Android Studio, which is a free application used for developing Android apps. Just go to its website at developer.android.com studio, and you should see a button to download the version for your operating system. Download and install it, and then we'll move on to the next step. Once you download Android Studio, open it and you will be guided to set up the development environment as shown here. Just click next and then select standard for the installation type. This will install everything required to build Android apps from the emulator to test the app on a virtual device to the Android libraries that provide functionalities for the app. Just click next here and then you need to agree to the license agreements. So just accept all the agreements and then click the finish button. Now Android Studio will begin downloading and installing all the components needed for Android development. You can click the show details button to see the progress here. It will take a while to finish, so while waiting, let's head over to cursor.com and install cursor on your computer. Now cursor is an AI powered code editor that we will use to write the code for the Android app. There is a few other code editor out there as well, but if you're just starting out, Cursor is perfect as it has a 2 weeks pro trial where you have unlimited use as shown in the pricing page here. So just download and install Cursor to your computer, and when that's done, let's go back to Android Studio. By the way, I have created another video here showing the best way to get started with Cursor. The link is in the description, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Alright, now Android Studio has finished installing all components, so we can go ahead and click finish, and the welcome screen will appear as follows. Here, you can create a new project, open an existing one, or clone one from a public repository. Let's select create a new project as we will build an Android app from scratch, and in this project template screen, select empty activity, and then click next. And here, we need to fill in our application details, such as the name, save location, and minimum Android version to support. So for the name, let's type weather tracker as we will build a weather tracking app. And for the package name, it will be your domain name in reverse. So example.com becomes com.example. I will put com.code with Nathan here. And if you don't have a domain name for your website, you can just put in your name here. Next, select a save location that's easy to find as we will put the app in cursor later. I will just put this in a folder called android-playground that I have created previously. Now for the minimum SDK and the build config, just leave them at the recommended options. Alright, now click finish, and Android Studio will generate a basic app that will serve as the starting point of our app. And now the app is ready, and you can begin to customize it as you please. First, the left window here is the navigation window, where you can select any files in the project. The content of that file will be shown on the right screen here, which is the code editor. On the right sidebar, we have some options relevant for testing Android app, such as the device manager here where we can create Android virtual devices. There is already one virtual device created during the setup earlier, it's called the medium phone here. And if we want to run the virtual device and test our app, we can do so by simply clicking on this play button on the top of the screen. Um, it will take a moment to load here. And once the Android emulator is online, Android Studio will install the app there and then automatically open it for us to see as well. So here is the app. I will put the emulator in a detached window so that we can move it around. And now here we can zoom in and we can see the text here. Now if we change the text in the app file here, for example, let's replace Android with boss. And then rerun the app by clicking this refresh icon at the top. Android Studio will rerun the app in the emulator and here we can see the text is changed to boss. Now if we want to stop the app, we can click the square icon here which stands for stop and the emulator will quit the app. Alright, now we know how to run Android apps in the emulator. Next, we will put this Android app in cursor and start using AI to write the code for us. Now before we get into the exciting part, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button down below, and please help me reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, as it will mean a lot to me, making me feel more excited to create useful videos just like this one. Alright, so here in the main screen of cursor, click on the open project button here, 
and then open the Android app project we created in Android Studio earlier. Now that the Android app project is in cursor, we can start asking cursor to develop an Android app for us by sending a request here in the chat box. For this example, I will ask cursor to create an Android weather tracker app that can track weather in cities selected by the user. This app will have two tabs, the weather tab where a list of tracked cities are shown, and the add city tab that can ask user for a city to track. Popular cities will be included when the app is running for the first time, such as New York, London, Tokyo, and Bangkok. With the prompt set, press enter, and cursor will now begin to work on the app. First, it will read the existing files, and then it will start generating files and code to complete the request. Here, we can see it started by adding new libraries to the .toml file, and it continue to edit or create other files as required to complete the request. Now, this generation will take a few minutes, so I will skip ahead to when it's finished, and we will then run the app. Okay, so here, Cursor reported that the Weather Tracker app is now ready, there's also a summary of what changes it did. We can also see here that it created or modified 18 files and writing almost a thousand lines of code. We can explore the files changed by cursor here, but we're not going to do that. Instead, let's go back to Android Studio. And here, we can build the app first by clicking this hammer icon. It will cause Android Studio to build the app, downloading any libraries added by cursor just moments ago. We can open the build logs here, the libraries added to this app is being downloaded so that the app will run properly. This process will also happen when we click on the play button, but it's better to just build first and then click run app manually later. Okay, so Android Studio said that the build is successful, so let's run this app. Let the app load for a moment. And here's our weather tracker app, it looks quite nice. It has a weather info for the four cities we requested in the prompt. Now let's try to add a new city by tapping on this add city menu. Let's add Berlin. Okay, so the app is suggesting the locations with that name, which is pretty cool. Honestly, I didn't know there's more than one place named Berlin. But of course, I'm in the capital of Germany, so I will select DE here. Now we're back in the city list, so let's scroll down. And yup, the city is now added to the list. Well done. And we can also refresh the weather info by clicking on this refresh icon, but nothing happens for now because this is already the latest weather info. Now let's try to delete a city. I'm going to delete London here, and yes, the city is removed from the list. Our app is now working as expected, so good job cursor. Now if there is something you would like to edit or change in the app, you can simply go back to cursor and send another request. For example, I want to ask Cursor to add colors to the weather card to make it more beautiful. Add soft gradient blue when rainy, soft gradient yellow when sunny, and soft gradient gray for windy or cloudy weather. Send the prompt in, and again, Cursor will read existing files before performing any changes, and after a while, it will start updating the files to fulfill our request. So again, I will skip a bit to when this generation is finished, Okay, here cursor already completed the task, and we can go back to Android Studio, and then click the refresh button up here, to let Android Studio update the app in the emulator. And here's the updated app, we can now see the card has gradient gray color because it's cloudy. Now let's try to add a city that's sunny and rainy, so that we can see all the different colors. Um, here I will add Jakarta. Select this, and then scroll down to the bottom. Um, it seems the city has the same weather info, so I will pause a bit and try many different cities until I get the colors here. Alright everyone, I finally got the orange color for sunny weather from Florida in the United States, as well as the dark blue color for rainy weather from Hilo in Hawaii. So with that, I think the app is completed. Next, I will show you how to add an icon to this Android app. Now if you didn't have an icon ready, you can create one using ChatGPT, so head over to ChatGPT.com and just ask it to create an icon. For example, here I will ask it to create an icon for an Android weather tracking app, make the icon visually appealing following Android icon guidelines, and then I will give the size for the icon. This generation will took some time, so I will skip ahead to when the generation is done. And here we have the icon generated by ChatGPT, 
It looks quite nice, but there is a black background around the icon, which we need to remove because app icons should have transparent background. Let's download the icon first, and then head over to photop.com, which is a browser-based image editing tool. Open the image we just downloaded here, and then click the select menu, and magic card over here. Now we can see the icon background is also removed here, so click on the green color on the top left here, and then draw a line on the icon background. The green color will keep the image, and red is used to cut it. Now that we have a transparent background, click OK, and now we can export this image as a PNG. I'm going to name it weather-tracker-icon and then click save. Now that the icon is saved on the computer, let's go back to Android Studio and then select the rest folder on the left side. You need to right click on it to open the context menu and then select the image asset option. Here we can update the default icon used by Android Studio. So click the path menu here and then select the icon you want to use. Once the icon is uploaded, you can see how it looks in different types. There is the rounded icon as well here. If all is good, you can click next and then click finish. Okay, so the app icon is now added to the app. We can try running this app again on the emulator. Okay, and here we can see the icon is already used by Android. And next, we can go to the Android home screen and then open the app drawer. And look here. The app icon is now used by our weather tracker app. So that's how easy it is to add an app icon to an Android app. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. But overall, that's how you can develop an Android app with the help of AI. After creating the Android app project in Android Studio, you can immediately open it in Cursor and then let it know what app you want to make. After that, you can leave it until Cursor is finished and then you can send another request if you feel further development is required for the app. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope this simple workflow could help you to build your first Android app that's useful for other people. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Kowin Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.